Thank you, Amelia. It's an important project. It's been in the works for quite a while. Yeah, we are talking about the grand opening now. It is here for the newly expanded and renovated St. Louis Kaplan Feldman Holocaust Museum. Fox 2's Chris Renier is in West County with a look at the museum. We are inside one of the most critical areas of the St. Louis Kaplan Feldman Holocaust Museum. This is the real center, the historical core of the museum, telling the story, the terrible, horrific history of what happened during the Holocaust. Here you have one of the artifacts that you will see when you come in. This is a camp uniform that the prisoners were forced to wear. And joining us is Helen Turner. She is the Director of Education here at the museum. Helen, thank you very much for having us. I appreciate it. Can you take me through a little show and tell, if you will, of what is inside this case? These items are emotional, but they are necessary to tell this story. We can start with, with what amounts to an, an ID tag, correct? Certainly, yep. Yeah. So this case is talking about both life and death in the camps and showing a variety of different camp experiences. Okay. So this tag um, is an identification tag that was given out at Auschwitz. Um, in Auschwitz, people tend to think of the tattoos, but mm -hmm. not everybody was tattooed. Mm -hmm. um, and some people were issued ID tags. Okay. Um, so we've got ways that people were labeled and dehumanized. We've also got the shoes that people wore in different camps. Um, and Primo Levi, a Holocaust survivor, famously said that death begins with shoes. Shoes that would create sores, that would be difficult to walk in, they would create infections. Um, so we're really seeing you know, how people were processed into the camp, how they were dehumanized. But then for me, the central point of this case is the child shoe that we have in the back. Indeed. Um, this shoe is very small, it's very light. We know it was worn um, by a young child. It was found um, in a killing center. And so we know that in all likelihood, this young person could not have survived. Helen, you've taken me through some of the museum. I've kind of done a walk through this morning. It's emotional. It is difficult to see, but clearly very important, particularly in the times that we are living in now. What do you want people to know um, before they come? Mm -hmm. What's the mindset they should come with, and mm -hmm. what's your message to people who might want to come see this? Because it is heavy, and you need to be ready. Certainly. Um, so we, are, we operate on the philosophy of safely in and safely out. And that means that myself, our museum team, our volunteers, we're here to give you um, warnings and guidance before you step into the exhibition and to catch you on your way out so you have a time to, to breathe and, and digest. Um, the museum is really set up so that it does carry the weight of this history, but also so that we've created points where we can catch you and make sure that you're all right. Let me give you some particulars about the museum here. It is at 36 Millstone Campus Drive that's basically right off Lindbergh and Shoots here near Crevecourt. It is going to be open to the public from 10 a.m. until 4.30 p.m. Wednesday through Sunday. It is $6 for children 10 to 17 years old. Children under 10 are free. It is $12 for adults and there are various discounts that you can use. After the ribbon cutting this morning, the grand opening of the museum to the public will be this afternoon where you can come in and see the history that is documented inside here of the Holocaust. For now, reporting your report, I'm Chris Renier.